Cerulean City. From the rooftops to the lampposts, this city is all about water. But what's really going on underneath the surface of this pool tile paradise? How is the local economy doing? Well, that is what we are going to find out today as we do another unemployment report for the region of Kanto. This time, it's Cerulean City. I know a lot of you uh, might be asking yourselves, how are we going to figure out what the unemployment rate is of Cerulean City? Well, the answer to that is the same as it is every time. We are doing what's called a direct survey. We are going to talk to every single person in this wonderful city. Then we'll take all that data, do a little data analysis, and have a press conference at the end to share the results. Are you ready? Good, let's begin. We're going to start with uh, all the people outside. This person is first. So we have what looks to be some sort of teenager hanging around outside talking about trees. I met someone who looked like this in one of our other surveys, and I think we determined that this person was a child. Maybe we're saying, what, 15, 16? I mean, take a look at his hair. That haircut was recently done, probably at some sort of great clips. So we're going to count this person as a child, ergo, not applicable. Same with this person as well. She looks to be around the same age as the first guy, wearing some sort of school uniform, it looks like, so also not applicable. Now, this is a grown adult. He's got a belt, his pants are, or, or shirt's tucked into his pants. He's got a wisdom hairline. He says, you're making some sort of encyclopedia of Pokemon. That sounds like a fun time. The way he says this, he goes, you're making some sort of encyclopedia, right? You know, he's not saying, wow, nice Pokedex. He says some sort of encyclopedia, which is like your mom calling your PSP a N Nintendo, right? Uh, and actually, if you read into that a little bit, people who talk like that tend to be people who don't have a lot of time to stay up to date with sort of like modern technology. And I think that combined with um, his attire of the nice tucked in shirt, you know, plus his age, I think he's probably employed. Whoa, a bomb. We have a child training a bomb. Hello, sir. You look a little bit older. He says you're a trainer too. So that implies that he's a trainer. Collecting Pokemon battling, it's a tough life, isn't it? He's a trainer. He talks about how it's a tough life. I feel like that's not someone doing it as a hobby. I feel like that's someone living off the income they get from Pokemon battles, right? So I'm gonna say most likely this person's also employed. Now down over here you see there is a uh, master trainer. If you haven't seen the other episodes of the series, we're not counting master trainers because uh, from our perspective, they are pro they're, they tend to be itinerant. Obviously it's possible that they live in the city, but I think it makes more sense statistically just to not include them. So this person, not even part of the survey. So that's gonna be most of the people standing outside within the city walls. But Cerulean City also has this big long bridge. Uh, so we're gonna have to make some determinations here because this is gonna get a little complicated. Like at some point we have to start asking ourselves, are these people up on these sort of routes that are connected? Do all of these people live in Cerulean City? If you look at the town map, where we are specifically right now is not a path that connects to another city, right? So these aren't necessarily itinerant people. Maybe if we talk to them, they'll give us some clues. All Pokemon have weaknesses, don't care. Pokemon gets confused, switch it, whatever. On the SSN, I saw trainers from around the world. The SSN, that's interesting. Because if this kid was on the SSN, not only was this kid traveling, the SSN leaves from the port of a city down here called Vermilion City, which implies that the kid traveled from there up to here. So that's a good clue that maybe these people are not from Cerulean City. Maybe they're itinerant Pokemon trainers who sort of traveled here to practice, and to earn a little bit of money while they travel around. Maybe they don't actually make homes here. They're sort of like campers, right? So here's what I'm gonna do. I think it's the opinion of the Bureau of Labor Statistics that all the kids on this bridge probably live in Cerulean City because they've sort of claimed this bridge and they test trainers trying to go up here. So these five kids, though they aren't applicable for employment, are gonna be part of the population. And then from the bridge, all the people over to the right I'm gonna assume are not members of Cerulean City. They don't live here, not part of the population. However, this guy in the corner doesn't seem to be part of that crew. He's not really dressed like them. And all he's asking me is how his Charmander is doing. As far as we're concerned, this guy needs a job. Now the question becomes, what is going on in this house? Because this is the house that's on the end of the path that all these people are coming to visit. Uh, so we're gonna look in here now instead of waiting. See if that doesn't uh, help reinforce any of our judgments. Wow, a very attractive guy with a tucked in shirt. Okay, so first instincts are obviously this guy's employed. He is sleeping on a couch, which is an un which is unemployed behavior. He's doing research based on all this stuff on a bunch of Pokemons, okay. So he's a crazy Pokemon researcher. That sounds like a job to me. 
And it also makes sense because that means all those people are traveling to come see this guy, right? I like that. I think that all sounds uh, hunky-dory. Now, I think we got everyone in the immediate uh, city limits. So let's do things a little differently this episode. We're going to take a quick peek outside in the roots and just see if there's anything notable that we have to include. As usual, if we get uh, too far down the roots, we're just going to assume that these people don't actually live here, which seems to be the case. Not seeing anybody. Oh, there's one guy up there. Oh, there's a building. Okay, a couple of buildings. All right, let's, well, let's take a look in these buildings. First and foremost, this is some sort of checkpoint. You're like an, you're an officer of the law. Okay, so definitely employed, but do we live in Cerulean City? It's a maybe. Let's, see, let's check the map and see which city that uh, this guy's closest to. And if he's closest to Cerulean City, we'll say he lives there. Yeah, he's closest. Okay, that works for me. I can count this guy as employed. <laughs> Love a man who wears gloves at work, right? Something about that just, you know, gets me going. Now, let's see what's in here. Nope, this is some sort of train station, underground tunnel of some kind. What's up, sir? When my Pokemon is on my shoulder... Okay, that doesn't help me at all. This is some sort of underground pathway. Very nice. Extremely clean. This also very much feels like federal land, you know? Like federal government built this between two cities. I don't think there's a world in which those people are part of Cerulean. This guy, maybe. This is hard to say. What kind of clues do we have? Well, he's hanging out in the corner of an underground, like, pathway public public transit station, sort of. So that's not an overly good sign. Back where I come from, we had a lot of stations kind of like this for buses and, uh, and trains and stuff. And anytime you met someone who was standing in, like, a corner like this, that person's, that person's not employed. Probably unemployed. And lastly, we got this house here. This looks nice. Hello, folks. What are you running? Is this some sort of daycare? I run the Pokemon daycare. Oh my god, it is a daycare. Despite the fact that these people are plenty old enough to retire, look at them. You gotta love small business. It's a clean environment. They're friendly. Oh my goodness, they even have a cash register. How lovely is this? Thank you for being employed, ma'am. And what about you, sir? I'm Mr. Hyper. That's what they used to call me. If you want me to train up your Pokemon, bring me some bottle caps. I collect them. Bottle caps? So your lovely wife is running a business, I assume wife, and you're standing in the corner collecting bottle caps. I'm not, I'm not in love with sort of this heteronormative, you know, angle of wife doing a legitimate job and husband is taking his hobbies too seriously, right? That's not great, but because you're really old, um, unfortunately I can't count you as unemployed, so you are just gonna be not applicable, which is fine. I mean, you know, I'm not, I don't mean to make fun of him for taking his hobby seriously. I'm just saying that that can, that's a common problematic relationship dynamic that we should really interrogate. Not, is it my job to interrogate it? No, I'm a YouTuber. I'm a glorified adult lullaby composer. Not an ethical committee. <clears throat> okay, I think that is everybody um, outside in Cerulean City, including people who are in buildings that are outside the city limits, which means guess what? It's time to start um, entering people's homes without permission. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Only skilled trainers can collect gym badges. So this guy knows all about gym badges. Also, apparently he can cook. He's got some, uh, he's got his pots and pans and stuff out. Got a nice, well-kept house. Two chairs in the house, maybe implying a second person, but only one cup of tea. Out in his backyard, he's got a very buff man. We're starting to see a story develop here a little bit. Slightly eccentric, older man. Extremely attractive buff gentleman cleaning his backyard. Sort of a classic American love story. And I, you know, I hate to say it, but generally old guys with money, they don't get their money from standing around all day. They typically have jobs. So I think I gotta stay employed for this guy. Next up, another house. Holy hell, you've got a bunch of rocks in your house. That Pokemon is too big. Jesus, how'd you get it in the door? Hello, ma'am. I was stopped when I tried to enter a Pokemon with my dear Onyxy. Yeah, that was utterly unnecessary. My Onyxy is such a good boy that it goes into its Pokeball without even being asked. So you're like one of those people who tries to bring a, an untrained dog into a restaurant and be like, it's a service dog. And then the staff's not allowed to ask because it's illegal, which just makes sense and is good that they're not allowed to ask. Is this your son? Is he a master trainer? Does that mean he lives here? Maybe this lady and that other guy are like divorced. Maybe they got divorced because he is gay. And so now he's living his best life and she's here with their son. I mean, they do live next door to each other. 
right? Which is a very like amicable divorce kind of situation. That would explain the onyx, you know? You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm getting distracted. Is this lady employed or not? Gut check says no. My gut check says she stays at home with the onyx and her kid is a really good master trainer and is taking care of her. She's retired. Oh my goodness, what's going on in this house? Wow, you guys, hello. These people just got burgled by some sort of demonic monster. These ones are always tough because part of you wants to go, well, she looks like a stay-at-home mom and he looks like a working dad and that's their dumb kid. But is that just my internalized heteronormativity showing through or is Pokemon, especially older Pokemon, just generally a heteronormative kind of environment? We did just meet a lovely gay couple, but most things in Pokemon are tired tropes because it's using it's it's simplistic this is a very simple continent so i'm just i'm gonna gut check it i'm gonna go with it i'm gonna say employed stay at home mom not applicable maybe it's the other way around either way the statistics are going to be the same and that's what matters next up we got another house a lot of houses in cerulean city this is actually probably the first place that has almost adequate housing for all these people i'm taking care of injured pokemon here well, that's nice of you she wants to give me a bulbasaur you can't bribe me into saying that you're employed, but I will take your Bulbasaur. So she's fostering animals, that's wonderful, lovely. Is she getting paid to do it? She needs money to care for these things, so I'm sure people are giving her money. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say it's like she's running an at-home daycare for sick Pokemon. That's a job. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate your service. I gotta say, I think I'm getting pretty good at, at looking into subtle clues for people's employment, like, I'm feeling pretty confident about this. I think this might be my most accurate survey yet. But of course we're not done. We finished all of the houses, but there's still one more set of buildings to look at. Let's take a look at all of the bespoke buildings. First, here's an easy one, the Pokemon Center. You already know there's gonna be some employment in here. Number one, cha-ching. Thank you, healthcare hero. We got Circus Man, how's it going? Um, do you want me to teach you a marvelous move? Sure, is it for money? No, it's not. There's not a circus around here, so there's no way that this person's from here. He's got a whip. So he's like, he's not just cosplaying, he's full on circus. Over in the corner, we've got a kid. Hello, hanging out, looking at the map. No reason to think he doesn't live here. Over here, we got another kid. Two more kids, actually. And in the corner, an old guy with a briefcase. So he may be employed, he may be traveling. Have you heard about Bill? Everyone calls him a Pokemon fanatic. Based on how he's dressed and the suitcase he has, I feel like it's most likely he's like visiting a relative in the hospital rather than someone who actually lives here, right? Is that fair? Next, we get to go in my favorite place of all, the Pokemart, because we have uh, it's just the, we have the most attractive man uh, in the history of Pokemon right here. Look at that guy, wow. If I knew someone who looked like him, I would, I sure would want to pounce on his bones. Hello, sir, thank you for your employment. We've got a young person here, another young person here. Pokemarts are really like, I swear, every time we come into these things, it's just kids buying like soda pop and candy, basically. Now, let's hit the gym. Okay, last time we were in a gym, well, first of all, this guy's definitely employed. Last time we were in a gym, we got into trouble because there was a bunch of children working for an adult man and it was kind of, the energy was a little bit off. But what about these three people? First of all, are they adults or children? We can't really see because we can't get very close. But this gym does have a, oh my God, there's people up in the stands. I can't, I can't, it just, I don't know. They're probably from out of town. We're just gonna say they're from out of town. So this gym is, is way more elaborate in a way that makes me think this gym is probably using the money it's been given to pay its employees and sort of set up all of this nice stuff. And again, it's hard to tell based on the angle that we have, but I feel like we can say that these three people are employees. And then of course up here, the woman of the hour. It's Misty. And with that, there's only one more place to look. It's this lovely little, I guess, bicycle shop? Oh no, home of the bike maniac. Allegedly a home. My guess is it's a shop. All right, so number one, we've got a little kid. Number two, we've got another kid. Great. Then we got a master trainer, again, not counting. And finally, I assume you, sir, are the bike maniac. Now I know you say it's a collection, but I think anyone with half a brain can see that you've got stuff stocked in a way that obviously it's meant for sale, right? Plus this says it's a shiny bike, it looks expensive. It costs a million dollars. You saw it, it costs a million dollars. Okay, the man is selling bikes. I don't know who he's selling to at that price, but he's selling bikes. The bike maniac is employed. <laughs> And guess what? Unless I'm mistaken, that is everybody 
in Cerulean City. So all that's left is for me to write that report, send it off to the Bureau, and we'll have a press conference for you in three, two, one, press conference. <clears throat> Hello, folks. Hi. Uh, welcome. Uh, welcome to another employment situation summary from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, today, just one piece of uh, order for you before we uh, get rolling here. I know last week I told everybody about the new printer that the Bureau had purchased me, which I appreciated very much. Unfortunately, um, due to sort of budget constraints and things like that, uh, we've run out of color ink. So um, I've, I've been tasked to put out the call for, um, again, additional donations. If possible, we would appreciate it. Now, uh, with that out of the way, today's unemployment survey is going to be about Cerulean City in the region of Canto. Uh, and uh, without further ado, let's get started, shall we? Total surface payroll employment in Cerulean City is at 16 persons and unemployment is at 11.1%. That was reported by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, my employer, uh, earlier today. Cerulean City is a mid-sized city in the region of Canto with a population of 37. The city is flanked by natural water features, including a river... We don't, we don't need to worry about this. This is not a geography lesson. Like every city above a certain size in Canto, Cerulean City has a local chain mart and a public hospital, as well as a fighting jo dojo, excuse me, known as a Pokemon gym. It's hard words for these ones. Uh, the Pokemon gym is where willing participants can go in order to battle Pokemon so that they can gain uh, money or fame. At this point, the Bureau is uh, operating under the assumption that these three amenities, given their uniformity and their sort of free use policy, are either entirely government run or in some way tied together under one ruling authority, possibly one wider corporation, or maybe there's just some sort of subsidy thing going on. Um, but so far, all three of these things have been identical in every city we've surveyed, which is interesting. In terms of economics, Cerulean City has a number of markers of a healthy and sustainable business environment, uh, where other cities we've surveyed seemed uh, in some part propped up by the existence of those aforementioned subsidized or sort of chain infrastructure elements. Cerulean City is home to multiple unique businesses, including a world-renowned Pokemon research lab, a bicycle shop, and a Pokemon daycare. Uh, this high number of small businesses may indicate lower corporate tax rates or other uh, tax breaks on entrepreneurial endeavors, but more likely, the Bureau believes it's a result of Cerulean's clear investment in aesthetic and infrastructure. Now, one thing that we haven't uh, been able to get into as we've surveyed these uh, cities in Canto is we don't really understand sort of the governmental power structure. Uh, so let's take a moment to start talking about that as we've got a little bit uh, more data this time to play with. It's unclear who, if anyone, is in charge of distributing theoretical tax revenue to public projects uh, in places in Canto. The clearest figure of authority in the cities we've seen so far is the leader of the Pokemon Gym, who seems to hold some sort of respect or power over the area they reside in. In Pewter City, for example, which was the last survey we did, the gym leader, Brock, presided over a somewhat simplistic and incongruent gym, and that lack of care was reflected in the wider city as well. Here in Cerulean, the gym leader's name is Misty, whose Pokemon gym is clean, elaborately decorated, and staffed by paid adults, unlike uh, with Brock, who is using unpaid children. The city itself is clean, uh, well-decorated, with, again, a diverse business environment. So this disparity in care uh, may indicate that the gym leaders themselves do have some control over how the cities themselves are run, so it may be Missy herself that can sort of take some of the credit uh, for fostering this holistic business environment, right? So if that's the case, good job to Misty. Um, however, the other possibility is that Canto is a sort of unique anarcho-capitalist dictatorship where governing rules are set by ruling corporations and each city is seen as more of a, a franchising opportunity rather than a living space. In this framework, gym leaders could be seen more as district managers with things like child labor laws uh, either eminently bendable or entirely non-existent, which would explain the very high number of children either working or traveling alone. Um, all that aside, the unemployment rate itself at 11.1% isn't necessarily a huge issue, despite being a little bit higher than we normally would like to see, uh, just given the population, the size of the city. But it is notable that the entirety of the unemployed population in Cerulean City are males aged 20 to 30. And anytime patterns like that develop, local officials are encouraged by the Bureau uh, to make certain that there isn't any sort of uh, any underlying prejudices or systemic issues that may be causing it. 
11.1% puts Cerulean City near the bottom of our list, just behind Whiterun in Skyrim and in between uh, the Earth countries of Honduras and Chile. This data comes from a direct survey conducted by the Bureau over a single day, and that is going to wrap up our survey of Cerulean City. If you want to see the full unemployment ranking so far, this is our 11th survey. You can wait right at the end of the video. It will be put up. But until then, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, post a comment down below saying you liked it. That uh, tells me that I'm making what you want to see, which is what I want to do because I'm here to serve you. My channel is not possible without the support of my patrons whose names you can see scrolling by me right now. If you can, check out the Patreon. Last but certainly not least, in my free time, I make a lot of music. I use that music in all of my videos. So today, another song for you. Please enjoy it, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios. Adios.